transgenderism. Transgenderism is dying. Was trend was transgenderism a bad thing? <laughs> uh, trend, transgenderism, transgenderism was a double-edged sword. Um, but nowadays, you notice that the the whole trend is very much dying, largely because the hype is dying. And largely the re and the large largely the reason why the trend genderism the kookiness that you kind of saw going on is dying is because the attention to the issue of transitioning is dying. Um, one of the big things about the villainization of people who transitioned. And, and a lot of, it seemed to me to be a lot of like, there's this whole classic concept of the LG, you know, at one time it was LG, then it was LGB, then it was LGBT, you know, and at that point it was kind of like the L and the G didn't want anything to do with the B and the T, right? Some people say nowadays that it's the BLT spectrum, <laughs> which is really funny. But, right, or you get now that it's just, it is a sentence that is an acronym like this long, you know, um, written a million zillion different ways from Canada to Ethiopia, you know, to China, to Siberia, to wherever, all around the world, partly because that it's that is something that is just very diverse, probably because there's something that's very cultural. You know, some some places may include intersexed in the LGBT, and some may not. Um, I'm not saying that it shouldn't, I'm just saying, or that it should, I'm just saying that it is culturally different everywhere you go. Uh, but historically, they're historically, um, you know, in say Western world, there's this classic divide between the LG and the LG, LGB, and the T. You know, that they people really, a lot of the gay, lesbian, bi people really do not want to be associated to us, uh, and so on. Some people hated David, Dave, Dave Chappelle for the skit he did. And I don't know that Dave Chappelle was uh, being hateful. I think Dave Chappelle was being sarcastic. You know, he was shedding light on issues through sarcasm, which can easily and is typically uh, viewed upon as being negative because it is. It's casting in a negative light, but it's kind of like drawing it out into the light by saying, by looking at it from a negative point of view. It's backwards. But it, it draws attention to it. I like his joke about Discrimination Olympics. You know, it's like, who's in the lead in terms of Discrimination Olympics? Olympics. <laughs> it's very true. Um, however, with the trend genderism, what happens is is that the transgenderism itself, you know, brought all of this attention and spotlight onto not just people who transition, but onto the LGBT spectrum. And the reason why you had so many like right wing fascist wing nuts coming for people who transition is because it is the modern angle, the modern lingo of attacking all LGBT people. All of them. All of the old ghosts, all of the old skeletons, all of the old wounds, those are all capitalized upon, you know, to target people who transition. Right? And it went on for like 
I mean, it's still largely going on, and it's been maybe like seven years since the whole trend kind of came into existence. I mean, part of trend genderism is it allowed some people the courage to move forward and be themselves, to attempt to be happy. You know, I'm one of those people, and and there were moments where I was very happy. There were moments where I was completely destroyed, you know, because of who and what I am and the amount of shit that I went through, right? And then there is the moments where, you know, everything clicked and worked and I was relatively, and I was happy. Or maybe even, even happier because of all the other crap that went on which could also inversely become negative again, you know, when you have something that's so valuable to you and you, it is in such peril and jeopardy of falling apart all the time, it becomes even more valuable. You cling to it even harder. The more you cling to it, the more it falls apart, you know? But, you know, there, there, there were some kooky trend genderism things. You know, there are people who are identifying as being wolves or bees or cats or just really loony stuff or people who just literally like, I threw on a dress and said, hey, I'm female. And I don't know that you shouldn't be able to do that, but, you know, it also negatively impacts people like me. Um, it, it kind of like discredits people like me. And in some ways you will see things like gay men say, you know, we don't have anything to do with that. That's got nothing to do with us, right? That is, that is not me. You know, do not pig me in that light, right? And, and largely because that is not them. Right? You know, I do not represent a gay male. Right? We, we're two different things. You know, we may, maybe one time someone like me was a gay male and transitions, and, you know, there's a lot of that baggage that goes forth, but everything changes after that. After hormone replacement therapy, everything changes. I remember being in the position of being incredibly afraid that if I if I transition and I can't get on hormones, then how can I transition? You know, I you know, would would I be in the position where it'd be like I would not be able to identify as being how I see myself? But I you know, if I could not have just that that increment of just the title. Should I should I be denied that title? That's a tough question to ask. You know, but you but you have people who who literally went out there and just like, you know, put makeup over two weeks worth of stubble and said, you know, you you will accept me as being a woman. You know, no effort made whatsoever. And that, that again, you know, negatively uh, reflects upon someone like me, someone who is literally attempting to transition, you know, to the full extent as much as possible, you know, 24 7, 365 days a year for the rest of my bloody life. You know, and if you look at somebody who is like, you know, I literally just threw on a dress and like put some eyeshadow on and now I identify as being female, you know, then people will go, okay, you're female. Right? And whilst that might set the bar incredibly low for somebody like me, it also creates the issue that like, with government or something like that in terms of funding, they will just look at you and go like, they don't need anything, why do you need anything? You know, and the fact of the matter is, is that if I really, really wanted to transition, you know, 
to have the money ahead of time is is basically impossible. You know, and that's why so many of us get caught up in doing things like prostitution. You know, we prostitute ourselves so that we can fix our face because we hate our face, right? Because we didn't really grow any breast tissue and we need implants and we're denied implants. And so the only solution is to get out there and whore it. Literally the only solution, right? Unless you come for money, you know, your chances of making money as this is severely diminished. You know, doors will close on you. You know, and what option do you have? It used to be a long time ago that that was, in terms of employment, that was our basically our only option. Why is it that all around the world, you know, people who transition, you know, they're largely their their only means of employment was prostitution? Because we are outcasts of society. Today we're more members of society. At one time we were outcasts of society. And the only way to survive as an outcast society is to act outside the law a lot of the time, because you cannot survive with inside the law, with inside society. Interesting note, you lose your identification, you quickly become outside of society. You lose your, your wallet with all of your ID in it. You, know, you are almost no longer a citizen, and it's really hard to get your foot back in that door sometimes especially if you have no home. A lot of us are prone to being homeless. I don't, there are not many, like transitioning, the amount of people who transition are largely a minority, right? There are, there are a lot of people even non-binary people, you know, non-binary people transition from being binary to being non-binary, you know, and even that usually entails more than just like donning a dress and saying, hey, I'm female, I am a woman, look at my facial hair. And non-binary comes in many different forms, but non-binary people transition from being binary to being non-binary. Non-binary people are very real. Non-binary people very much exist, right? I've, I've known some, and they, there is, they are congruent. You know, the idea that they, this is, you know, one minute they're like this, one minute they're like that, is not, uh, Accurate, you know the old joke image about like one half male, one half female. I saw this picture of Alice Cooper the other day, and he was wearing a tuxedo, but he had one leg out in like fishnet stockings and a heel. You know that's that's not really non-binary. That's just sort of gender bending, right? There's there's a lot of gender bending. Transgenderism was a lot of gender bending, which again I don't know that this is a bad thing because this challenges society. It's like punk rock. It challenges society. Right? And sometimes society needs to be challenged on various different things in order for it to get its poop in a group. You know, in order for it to change its backwards, negative, inner, ignorant perceptions upon things, its very inhumane stance upon things. Something, needs, something like transgenderism needs to come along and challenge that. You know, but what's left after, you, after all the, after the trend, the fad is gone, right? You're left dealing with a very small minority. If we're not for transgenderism, I may not have transitioned because I would not have had the, the courage to do it. And should I have done it? Yeah, because I was probably going to like, not live much longer. I've been dealing with it most of my life. I've been dealing with it all my life more intensely so in other points of my life than, than others, but that's a whole different story, you know, but it just basically came to a head like five years ago where it was kind of like, I cannot keep doing this. I need to come out of the closet. 
and coming out of the closet was incredibly difficult, but in some ways, you know, there were the moments where I was incredibly happy. You know, I don't know that I would be here if I could not be me. Transgenderism helped with that a bit. <laughs> you know, it sort of started with Caitlyn Jenner. Transgenderism sort of started with Caitlyn Jenner. She posed on some magazine and uh, it just became infamous and it's kind of like burnt in everybody's memory. Interesting that it was an older person who transitioned. One of the negative things about transgenderism, I think, and and something that will will never change, um, is that just the, the term in of itself, just the very nature of the term, you know, gets used against us to to make us third gender people. Now there are third gender people. Right? There are third gender people. I know them, I've met them. And then there's ones, you know, there are people who are non-binary, for example, then there are people who are binary, people who are very binary. I'm a very binary type of person. That does not gate, negate non-binary people. Non-binary people do not negate me. Between us, in the eyes of the government, I hope not, but probably. that could very well negatively impact both types of people. And look, the, all the lines got blurred, right, with transgenderism, transgenderism, all the lines between being um, two-spirit, which is a First Nations terminology about being kind of um, of two spirits, of a male-female spirit. but. But it is more complex than that, and it's, and it's also not specific to um, being gay, is my understanding. You know, it's not specific to LGBT. I think it's become more like that in modern day, but historically it's not really specific to being LGBT. It was more of a cultural sort of thing than First Nations people in Canada, but also, it, I think, too, incorporated uh, homosexuality and, and LGBT and, and gender and stuff like that. You know, you had the ancient Greeks who talked about the multitude of different genders, the variety and combinations of different genders, you know, and what, what is gender, right? This has been going on since recorded history, you know. Um, you have the, you know, you have androgyny, you have uh, gender fluidity, you have being gender queer, you have a lot of gay men, for example, who are gender queer. They, they have, they do things that make them happy, things that make them comfortable. You know, they like to wear like women's jewelry or more effeminate clothes. You know, to kind of like be themselves. You know, express a level of their personality, just like a cis man or a cis woman, a straight man, a gay man, a straight woman, a gay woman bisexual person may do, right? Even even certain colors, like we traditionally apply purple to I, the idea of bisexuality. You know, we even apply colors to different genders and stuff like that. And so, in one way, it's good that the trend, all the, all the blur between the different things is kind of dying. It's good that the trend is dying because then all the negative pushback will die alongside of it. However, it's also bad that it's dying because with all the, the popularity, the, the trendiness of it, you know, the push of it, the impact of it, the shock rock value of it, right? You know, like Rocky Horror Picture Show or something is, uh, the, the, to quote Marilyn Manson, the more that you fear us, the bigger we get. And that's very much what happens. And that's dying. You know, and with that dying, you know, I think that this minority of people will just not exist very much. You know, it will just kind of like 
two steps forward, one step back. You know, it amounts to like one step forward or something. Maybe that sounds kind of negative, but I just, I just feel like, you know, we have always existed, we always will exist, but yet the progress was kind of minimal. Maybe the progress wasn't kind of minimal. But like all things, it would just fade in time. And, you know, it just tends to go backwards to some degree. I mean, you could put in relation to the LGB, the LG movement. You know, with the LG movement, you know, there was I mean, homosexual people that existed since people have existed. Homosexuality exists in the animal kingdom. Even transitioning exists, exists in the animal kingdom. If you look at, like, say, different fish, you know, there are fish that, like, literally transition back and forth. You know, I think even their DNA changes. You know, so the concept of, like, transitioning is not even that metaphysically bizarre to us. You know, it's, it's something that's very real and even occurs in nature. and. If you look at the evolution of humanity, evolution of, of mammals and whatnot, fish is largely an, an aspect of the fetal development of people like, of, you know, homo sapiens. Right? To say that there isn't something inherently instinctual into that, you know, in a very I wouldn't say metaphysical, but in a very physical way. You know, it's like having two forward-facing eyes has been an incredibly key, you know, evolutionary advantage. Having two thumbs is a very key evolutionary advantage. You know, there's one time where land, where life existed on land, land moved, life moved into the ocean and became uh, adapted again, you know, you, you can make analogies between our hands and the fins of, you know, different aquatic animals, having forward-facing eyes, you know, animals with forward-facing eyes being more successful, be they aquatic or terrestrial, and so on and so on and so on. You know, so is there, is there not, apparently hiccups is largely related to back when we were amphibious creatures you know, in a stage of our development, you know, so can you not say that there's maybe not some aspect to us that is part of our long historical evolution as animals to the point of being human that, that for some reason, some of us come out like, like this, who knows? It's a stretch, granted it's a stretch, but there could be something to it. It happens with other animals other animals that are part, make up our DNA of who, what we are. And, and so in one way, I think that the trend genderism dying isn't a bad thing. In another way, it's a bad thing because it, it's also kind of muscle. You know, it was a kind of muscle that came valuable you look with the L and the G, you know, again, homosexual haven't existed since we'd existed, existed in the animal kingdom. You know, depression, you know, was kind of like, historically, it existed, it didn't exist. Existed, it didn't exist. It existed, it didn't exist. You know, it's just kind of this, sometimes I think of civilization as being like this worm that just kind of like comes out of the earth lands into another country, does something with that, goes back in the earth, comes out, goes into another one, and whilst it may be an aspect of civilization, it leaves a path of man behind it. Largely, you know, throughout the Victorian area and whatnot, you know, one time in Europe, it was very common for men to have boyfriends, to have, to be bisexual, to have boyfriends, have sexual relationships with, like, different men for different reasons, be it business or allegiances or kinship or 
what have you, and have a wife at home. You know, it's, it's still present in countries like East, East Indian countries, for example, where, you know, there's still this hierarchy where, you know, being affectionate with males, affection between males is considered good, but affection between women is bad. Affection between men and women is, you know, just whatever, right? But it's like, this is a lesser animal of this species than, than this one. You know, historically throughout European culture, you know, it was okay to have a male lover, male boyfriend, different male lovers, different boyfriends. Even King Henry apparently had like these male partners, and who knows what the deal was between them, but they had these these bonds of sorts, you know, that that uh, you know, that, that today when it came around to like Victoria, when religion became very much an aspect of it, you know, that it it became so wrong, you know, it became so wrong and that heterosexual became such the predominant nature that that like if you look at like my mother's generation, my mother's generation, if people start I have been around people my mother's age and if I start talking about, you know, my girlfriend or you know, right, or back when I was a guy and I experimented with other guys or something, you know, they would be kind of like, they just stop talking about it. We just don't talk about it. We just don't say anything. There's no response. You know, maybe you're just a little screwed up in the head at the moment, right? It just, it was, there was a point in the last century, in the 60s, and I think onto the 70s, you know, which largely came into be, largely with the, the LG, the LG revolution, you know, that from 70s, 60s, earlier on, maybe the 60s, earlier on, that like homosexual, homosexuality was so frowned upon, was considered, was looked upon as such a negative light, right, that you, people would be lobotomized, lobotomized. You know, people would be put into asylums, people would be locked away in jail. Homosexuality was considered an aspect of schizophrenia, um, considered an aspect of criminality. You know, people who were homosexual were, cons were considered criminals, you know, and were treated as such. You know, you were found out to be a homosexual, liable to be locked up in jail, maybe lobotomized. Not as severe for us. You know, did we, we discover, we, we suffered discrimination. Let's, let's, let's not, let's, you know, tippy to the situation, situation, you know, a lot of us just suffer discrimination, just walking down the street, right, you know, evokes attention, right, I can walk down the street with another girl like me, you know, holding hands, and people will stare and gawk and sneer and do, say things, and on and on and on, right, like, to say that there's not discrimination today, just, just, just still just, it just does not exist, right? It's just bullshit. It still very much exists. It, it's hard to say what the future holds in relation to people like us. Uh, largely in my day-to-day -day life, I want to just become a part of the background. You know, I never really wanted to do this channel. I did this channel because I was somebody who was going through this and I thought like, hey, this is something valuable to talk about. This is a reason to open your mouth and say something and you know, attempt to make a difference. I think with the acceptance of transgender, of transgenderism and the prevalence of transgenderism, 
I think I think it made the world a better place. I think it made the world a better place. Even if transgenderism negatively negatively impacted me in different ways, transgenderism, transgenderism, you know, largely made the world a better place. Even if it was just challenging, you know, the staunch idea of like what underwear is supposed to be. <laughs> I remember that Ben Ben Shapiro guy, you know, prattling on about like. You know, there are men's underwear and there are women's underwear. You do not confuse these two. You know, and it's kind of like, who cares, man? Who really cares? As long as it keeps the substance off your pants, who really cares? <laughs> you know? Who are you to judge? You know, maybe nowadays it's like, pink has just become another color. You know, pink is just another color that guys can wear. You know, and, and not have somebody, like I remember when I was a dude running around in pink, people would be like, oh hey, what's up with the pink t-shirt? And they'd be like, would you like to see me without it? <laughs> it's a t-shirt, it's serving a purpose. I like this color. Am I not allowed to like this color? I've always liked this color. 